If I'm being honest with you guys, I really, really did not feel like doing February's check-in for my low buy year. And that is because February was a very, very hard month for me. And I am so glad that it is now in the past. So I am wearing pajamas. I didn't think that you guys would mind. I felt like it would just make me a little bit more comfortable in today's check-in. Pajamas are my language. I love pajamas. That is what I wear almost all the time unless I'm leaving the house. And I'm just going to go ahead and read off my notes today to make it a little bit easier of a video for me to film. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and I am doing a low buy journey in 2024. There are a few reasons why I set this journey in place. One of the main reasons was I felt like I was consuming too much stuff to the point where it was even making me anxious and I wanted to scale back on that. With that being said, that doesn't mean that today or this year is a no buy, it just means that it is a low buy. I am doing this whole series in collaboration with Lisa. She is my accountability partner and we do talk on a fairly regular basis. I'm going to have her channel linked down below for you guys in case you're interested in checking out her journey as well. Our rules are a little bit different but somewhat the same. At the end of the day, we're both just trying to consume less for other reasons than each other. So how did February go? I actually use this little journey to keep or journal to keep track of how my months go and I fill in week by week how it went and how I felt about it. So let me open up to February. February week one, how did it go? Unfortunately, I lost my brother in February of week one and it was traumatizing to my entire family. It was 100% unexpected. It was something that was done it was a traumatic death and it was traumatizing for all of us and it was the start of the month so obviously week one was horrible for me i did make a purchase in week one that i didn't intend on making i will touch on that a little bit later in the video and i felt like almost giving up in week one i wanted to give up on my low buy i wanted to go out and do all the things that i normally would do but i held strong i only bought the one item and that is how week one went Week number two was still extremely tough. If I'm being honest, even now into March, things are still extremely tough. But in week number two, I got to take my daughter out graduation dress shopping. She is graduating the eighth grade and going into high school. Now, I am extremely proud of my daughter because she is very, very smart and she works very, very hard. And she got herself into college classes for free in high school. So I'm so proud of her and I was just... I just felt overwhelmed with pride when I was out shopping with her. I'm going to try not to I'm going to try not to cry. But I was just so proud of her and proud of the young lady that she's become and it was so much fun dress shopping with her and we went out to lunch. We also had to get her some new bras and things like that, but we just simply spent the day together and it was such a pleasure in such a hard time. Unfortunately, in week two, I also had to make a purchase. This was a purchase that I feel like is 100% justified and it's something that I had to make. I will touch on that later when I share with you guys all the purchases I made in the month of February. Week three, I decided to do something that was a little bit fun for me and a little bit different for me. I used to have a closet filled with clothes in all sorts of different colors of the rainbow, even if they didn't work for my skin tone. I decided to figure out colors that worked best for my skin tone. And the way that I actually did this is I already knew that I was a cool tone person, but I went through my camera roll and I looked at every single picture that I have of myself and I picked out the five colors that I felt like I looked the best in in my camera roll. And I also went through my closet to see how many colors I had of specific colors. So one example is blue. I feel like I look really good in blue. So I went through my closet and I noticed that I did have a lot of blue colored items, which justified the fact that justified the, the wrong word, but I can't think of the right word. It made sense for me to keep blue in my closet. So what I did is I took out everything that didn't fit me. I have gained weight over the last two years. I went through a diet three years ago. I lost a lot of weight. I went down to a size four and I've slowly gained the weight back and I'm back at my normal size, the size that I was when I started my diet three years ago. 
and I've just decided to embrace it and to love myself the way that I am. So I pulled everything out that was too small for me out of my closet. I also pulled out everything that doesn't make me feel good. If it's a little bit too, showing a little bit too much cleavage, if whatever the reason is, those items that I put on and I feel good when I put them on and then I look in the mirror and I change, I pulled all of that out of my closet and I had a lot of fun doing it and I reorganized everything by color. So all of my green dresses are together, all of my blue dresses are together, all of my white dresses are together, all of my purple dresses are together, and all of my pink dresses are together. Those are my colors and then and gray, but I don't have any gray dresses. And then I went through my shirts and sweaters, etc., my tops, my blouses, if you will, and I did the same thing. And now my closet is color coordinated. Everything works with my wardrobe. And I'm really excited for it. It feels really cool getting up and getting dressed. I open up my closet and see every single piece in my closet is something that I love. So that is something that I did on week three to help distract my mind and also give me a little bit of a confident boost not seeing those clothes that don't fit into my wardrobe or don't fit my body anymore. Week four was unexpectedly pretty emotional for me. I went out and did some things with family and of course as soon as people started asking me how I was doing I couldn't keep myself together and that's something with grief is you kind of go through the roller coasters sometimes you're okay sometimes you're not okay but week four and even now today this is March 2nd that I'm filming this I feel pretty emotional about everything that's going on and so week four was it was a rocky week but I did have some good things and I want to share that with you First of all, I went out to dinner with my little nugget, my son Gavin, he is my youngest son, and I just had the best time with him. We went out to Red Robin, that is where he wanted to go, and then we went out shopping at Target and he was able to pick out a new toy, which he had a lot of fun with. So that happened in week four, but also in week four, from discussing with my friends and my husband and my bag loving friends and Instagram people, I have finally pinpointed what bag number two will be. I haven't bought it yet, but I know what it is. I'm going down the research rabbit hole just to make sure that that is the correct bag, but I'm pretty dang sure that I know what bag number two is going to be and I'm really, really excited about it. Now I do want to say at the end of week four, or I guess this is week one of March, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek as to where I'm feeling today. I feel a little bit bagged out and I think that's just because I've been so invested in doing all the research to make sure that I picked out the perfect bag for bag one and now for bag two. I feel like I went a little bit overboard. I've been doing too much research and I've honestly let go of some of the things that I typically love doing that I couldn't focus on. So for an example, one is reading. I love to read on average. I read about a book a week. Well, honestly, you guys, in the last month, I haven't read at all. My mind just would not allow it. Every single time I would try to slow down, my mind went to a negative space and that included reading. So I just couldn't focus enough to read. And because of that, I was constantly doing bag research, which was a lot of fun. But now I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, Okay, enough is enough and I'm glad that it, I'm going to have a little bit of a space between buying bag number one and bag number two because I feel like it's needed. Okay, so that is how February went. As you can see, it was pretty much a shit show for me. It was very, very emotional. High emotions and low emotions. I'm so proud of my daughter and I had so much fun spending time with my little nugget. He just shines when he's by himself. All of my kids do. If you guys are not taking your kids out one by one or one on one with you. I highly, highly recommend it. But that is something that it just really fuels me as much as it fuels them. So that was definitely a high for me. Also, all of the funeral arrangements and everything, meeting up with all my family, people flying in from out of state to appreciate and love my brother and share their thoughts it just was a really really good time with family this month but was also very very hard and emotional okay so what did i purchase in february it's funny because i put right next to february purchases that my goal was to not purchase anything personally for me that did not work for obvious reasons I mentioned to you guys at the very beginning of the month, I purchased one item and the item I purchased was my new Victorine wallet. Now it definitely wasn't a 
negative purchase. It's something that I already intended on purchasing because I needed a wallet that had a billfold in order to keep my kids allowance cash inside of there. So I was already doing my research. I was already searching for the perfect wallet and I had already decided that the Victorine wallet was the one that I wanted to go with but I wouldn't have purchased it that day if my brother didn't die that day. So I purchased it the day that my brother died. I went out, I needed an escape. Me and my best friend went out and we just went to the mall and that's what I bought. So it wasn't necessarily a bad purchase, but I actually didn't in intend on buying that wallet until March, which is now. So unfortunately I bought it a little bit too soon, but it was, it, it is what it is. I don't feel guilty about it. I don't feel any type of way about it. I'm really happy to have the wallet. The next purchases that I purchased is my daughter needed some new undergarments, so I bought that for her. She also needed a dress for her eighth grade graduation, so of course I bought that for her. And this is the next topic. I mentioned earlier that I would share with you guys what I had to buy and something that I feel zero guilt about buying. And that is an outfit. I had to buy an outfit for my brother's funeral. As I mentioned, I feel like I sound like a broken record at this point. I have gained some weight. And so I didn't have anything funeral appropriate, in my opinion, something that I was going to feel comfortable wearing. And so I decided to buy two funeral outfits. I bought a dress and I bought a pants and long sleeve shirt. The reason why I did this is because Arizona weather right now or at the beginning of February is hit or miss. Sometimes it's very hot and sometimes it's very cold and I didn't want to stress about it. I wanted to have both options. If it's a little bit hot, I wear the dress. If it's a little bit cold, I wear the outfit and I feel zero guilt about this. Now I have two beautiful pieces that work in my color palette that are in my wardrobe that fit me but they were also served a purpose. And like I said, I just, I don't feel any guilt about it. It was something that I feel was needed. It's 100% justifiable. And if anybody has anything to say about that, please just don't. And then I purchased some clothes for my kids. My kids needed some new clothes. And so I decided to go ahead and buy some clothes for them. Target was having a big sale. I let them pick out a few outfits each and then I purchased those. And then lastly, which is really exciting, is my wedding anniversary is coming up. And so I bought my husband some stuff for our wedding anniversary. I did go a little bit overboard. I feel like he deserves it though. He's been going through some of his own stuff and he's been dealing with me and my stuff with all of the emotional roller coasters. So he is, I'm just, you guys, I don't know what to say. I'm just so in love with my husband. He's just so amazing. And the fact that he was able to handle everything that's on his plate right now and to be the backbone and the strength for me was just, he's just amazing. Woo! I didn't mean for this to be such an emotional video. However, I knew that it was going to be. There's no way that I could avoid it with this video and that's why I dreaded filming it, but I'm so glad I got it out there. I'm so glad that I am being open and vulnerable with you guys so that those of you who are following my low by journey and you are doing it yourself, you know that in during hard months, it's okay to make those little mistakes, but also get back on track. So in March, I am expecting a very, very good month. I'm expecting not to make any purchases for myself. You guys can hold me to it. And other than that, I'm just really excited to see what March brings us. And I'm really glad that February is out of the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I do have some subscriber goals. And also, don't forget to check out Lisa's channel, which will be linked right down below.